Hi everyone, it's Tony here from Ready Steady Excel. In today's video, I'm going to show you 10 tips and tricks in Microsoft Teams helping you to get the most out of the system. Please let me know in the comments below which tip you're going to be using the most. I'm going to start with a tip that's old, but it's pure gold, and I use this one a lot. So here I am in a meeting, I'm muted, and I want to quickly unmute myself. Rather than trying to find my mouse and clicking unmute, what I can do instead is press Control Shift and M, and this will unmute my mic. Control Shift again, and it mutes it. Now, if you're not good at remembering keyboard shortcuts, what I recommend is writing it onto a post-it note and then sticking it somewhere close to hand, so maybe on your monitor. And then the next time you need to remind yourself how to unmute, just look at your post-it note. And this is something that works really well for me. On the subject of keyboard shortcuts, if you want to see the full list of the keyboard shortcuts that are available in Microsoft Teams, then there's a couple of ways that you can do this. One way is just to press Control, full stop, and it will give you the list. Or the other way to do it is to click up here, forward slash, and then type keys, press enter, and it gives you the list. If you want to find the keyboard shortcuts for all platforms, then down here you've got link, C shortcut for all platforms. So click on there and it will open up into a browser. Going back to the meeting here. So if I was presenting to a large audience and I want to stop people from being able to unmute themselves, then I can do that. But it's worth noting that presenters can override that option. So before you stop people from being able to unmute themselves, do this. So go to more options, go to meeting options, and then from here you can select who can present. So at the moment by default on my system it's everyone. So I can say only me, or perhaps I want to specify the people, so maybe there's more than one presenter. But for this example I'm just going to go for only me. So I click there, and I've got the switch here to allow attendees to unmute themselves. So I can either do it from here, but there is another way, so let me just save this. So another way that you can control the mute is by going up here to show participants. Click here, more options, and you've got it here. Don't allow attendees to unmute. So if I click there, it comes up with this message. Attendees won't be able to unmute themselves. If someone raises their hand, a presenter can then let them unmute. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, don't allow. So as you can see on the right, the other participants of this meeting have now been turned into attendees and the mute button is grayed out there. So how this can work, as you're doing your presentation, you might pause and allow for people to ask questions. And if they want to ask a question, you can get them to raise their hand. So for example, Ron Burgundy has raised his hand to ask a question. As you can see, it went yellow there on the left and you can see the little hand there. And if I hover the mouse pointer over here, I can allow him to unmute and he can ask his question. If you're looking to add a large number of people to your team, rather than entering their email addresses into this field here, you can give them the option to join themselves. Now there's two options for this, and I have covered this in a video in more detail, but just to show you quickly now, if I click close, so any team member can do this, they just click next to the team name, more options, and you have the option here to get a link to the team. So with this link, you can copy it, paste it into an email, and then send it round. And then when people click on the link, they will get the option to join the team. And when they do that, the request will come to you or the other owners of this team for approval. Now, if you don't want to go through the approval process, so maybe you've got hundreds and hundreds of people, the other way you can do it is by clicking more options, manage team, settings. If I go to team code, I've got the option here to generate a code. And this code I can copy and paste again into an email or if I'm doing a presentation, sharing my screen, I could do full screen. This will show the code on the screen and this would allow people to join. And how they would join the team is when they go into Microsoft Teams, I would click join or create a team, enter the code into there and they will join the team straight away, no approval required. Now these two options that I've just shown you are only available for internal people. So you won't be able to use them for external guests. So if you want your messages to stand out when, when you'll post them to 
a channel, try this. So go to new conversation down here at the bottom. And if you click here where we've got the A and a little pencil, you've got your rich text format options. And the great thing about this option, not only can you format your text, but you do have the options here to control who can reply to this message. Everyone can reply, or perhaps you just want to select you and moderators only. And the other great option you've got here as well is that you can post this message across multiple teams. So by clicking select channels, I can then select the channels and teams I have access to. Then that message will then be broadcasted across all those teams. Another handy tip that I use from time to time, and this one is useful if you wanna follow up on a message that you've received. So here I've got Ron Burgundy asking me about the software request form. So if I wasn't ready to deal with this one straight away, what I can do is just hover my mouse here, click more options, and then I can save this message. So when I click save, it shows me here that it's been saved. And then to get to these messages later, I just go to my profile and then I click saved and it will show me my saved messages. And when I click on these areas, it will then take me to that team and channel, or if it was a chat message, it would take me straight to that location. Tip 5.5 please click like as this really helps to grow my channel. So this next tip is really useful if you have a team that has loads and loads of documents and you wanna get some of these documents to stand out, making it easier to find for people. So what you can do is you can pin these documents. So let me show you. So if I hover my mouse down here for terms and conditions, click show actions, and then select pin to top, it will pin it to the top of the list. And I can pin more than one document. So let's do this Wayne Enterprise contract agreement. I'm going to pin this one to the top too. And if you want to change the order of how these are pinned at the top, you can do that one too. So if I hover here, click on the button, click here, edit pin, then I can change the position. So if I go move left, and it just makes it easier for people to find those documents. Going back to posts, you can also pin messages that you receive here. So if I hover the mouse pointer over the message, click more options and then go for pin. Pin to confirm. So it shows a little pin there. And where these go, if I click here on this little eye for channel information, it's got all the channel information here so I can see who the members are. But if I scroll down, there's the pinned message. So this one is quite handy if you do have a lot of activity in your channels and it just makes it easier for people to find certain messages. One of the great things about Microsoft Teams is that it helps to reduce email traffic. But sometimes you want to update the team with an email that you've sent or perhaps you've received. So what you can do is that you can email the channel itself. And how you do this is if you hover the mouse next to the channel name, click more options, and you've got the option here to get email address. And I've got an email address here and with this, I can then copy and paste this into the to field, or if I want to forward it on, or I can BCC it, and then send that email, and then the email will then appear in the channel like this. Now, as the team owner, I can go into advanced settings, and I can control who can use this function. I can also control where the emails get sent from. So in this field here, I could put my organization's domain. So for example, readysteadyxl.com. But if you'd rather people not use it at all, then you do have the option here to remove the email address. If you want to create a message like this for people that send you an instant message, then you can, nice and easy. Perhaps you're busy because you're dealing with clients. So to set this up, all you do is go to your profile, and you go to set status message. Type in the message you want people to see. And you can also at mention people in this field here. So maybe in my absence, I can suggest that they contact someone else. And then tick this box here. So it will show when people message me. And then down here, I can set when this message will be cleared automatically. There's also a customized option. So you can specify the date and time. Now it's worth noting, if you have your out of office set in Outlook, this will override it. When you at mention someone, they will get a notification that you've mentioned them and they will see the full message. For my next tip, not a lot of people know this one, 
Um, so if you've got a long list of teams down here on the left hand side, you can reorder them if you want to. So typically when you create a new team, or if you get added to a new team, it will appear at the bottom of this list. But you can reorder it. So all you do to reorder is just drag and drop. So if I drag team C, I want it to be up here. Just drag it, let go, click, and there it is there. And I can just move this around however I want. The way I go. And if I want to hide these teams, so maybe I'm not using this team so much, or I want to reduce this list, I can just click here and then click hide. And if I ever want to unhide a team, I just expand here, click more options, and then click show, and it will pop it back to the list here. So welcome to tip number 10. We made it this far, well done. So this last one is actually my favorite one of a lot really. And it's something that I use quite a lot. This one is useful if you join a meeting using your phone, your work phone, using the Teams app. You join the meeting and then during the meeting, someone wants you to demonstrate something from your laptop. And when you go into your Microsoft Teams, it will say here, the name of the meeting is on another device. Do you want to join on this one? You click join. So you've got two options available here. The first one allows you to add this device. So that would mean that you're on two devices at the same time, but this one would be muted. And then you could then use your phone for the audio part. And you can go ahead and just share your screen on your laptop. Or the second option here is just to transfer to this device. So then you're just working from one device rather than two. So I'm gonna go for this one. It then brings up this joining screen. So you can toggle the options here as you wish, and then click join now and you're in the meeting from this device and it will end the call on your phone. And then from here, you could happily go ahead and start sharing content. If you wanna learn more about Microsoft Teams, then watch these videos here and I will see you in the next one. And a big shout out to Linus, who became my first patron this week. So thank you very much. If anyone else would like to join and get exclusive member only benefits, then check out the link here or look out for the one in the description.